In this third grade guided reading lesson, the children have been grouped according to the most recent Lexile level set, recent CGA data, the DAR assessment, and data from teacher made assessments. So when you triangulate all sources of this data, you'll find that students are generally performing in the same range. Right now, their current reading levels range from M to N, and this book is actually a level P. So it was perfect to use as a guided reading book and for moving their learning right along. So guys, today we're going to do a guided reading lesson again. And um, I have a book that I want to share with you today. It's called The First Woman Doctor, all right? Before we start reading, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been the first in your family to do something, like be the first girl or be the first boy to ever do something in your family? Yes? Well, I was the first, I was the first one my mom had. You were the first boy that your mother had, okay. Uh, Billy, what about you? I was the first boy that my mama had also. Okay. Katina, have you ever been the first to do something in your family or even amongst your friends? No? Okay. And then what about you, Ricky? I was the first one to, pick, to be the leader. The first one to be the leader of something? Okay, all right. Well, this is what this book is all about. Again, this is called The First Woman Doctor, and we're going to do this today. For, we're going to read this book for our guided reading lesson today, okay? I want to go over some word work with you because there, there are words in this book that you may be unfamiliar with. And so I kind of want to go over one of the rules for, for some of those words that we'll see, okay? So I'm going to spell the word yellow here yellow. And Billy, can you help me out and make sure these words are aligned properly? Yes. Okay. And before we look at this word and we get into some of the words that we're going to do for our word work, I want to point out that I want to go over why, the word why. Sometimes it'll sound like a vowel and Y will become a vowel and then sometimes the words will be the what the word letter will be a consonant so we're going to talk about when Y is a consonant or when it's a vowel does that sound great yes yes okay so this word says what yellow yellow how many syllables does the word yellow have Jamar two two syllables okay so where is the Y located Ricky, I'm sorry. Billy? Consonant? No, where is the, where is the Y located in this syllable? Not a vowel. Okay, it's located at the beginning of a syllable, right Katina? Yes, it's located at the beginning of a syllable. And so whenever a Y is located at the beginning of a syllable, it's a consonant, just like how you said, Billy, it, it becomes a consonant, okay? Let's look at another word. I want you, Jamar, to spell the word yard. Okay, can you all see this, this word here? All right, here's the word yard. How many syllables does yard have? It has one syllable, right? So it's a monosyllable word. And where is the Y located? It's located where, Katina? At the beginning. At the beginning of the word, as so it's located at the beginning of the syllable, correct? So again, here is the situation where Y is located at the beginning of a syllable and this means that it's a what? A vowel or a consonant? A consonant. It's a consonant, very good. All right, so let's look at a few other words. Now I'm going to spell the word typhoon. And how many syllables does typhoon have? Yes. Two. It has two syllables, typhoon. And where is the first syllable? Where Can you tell me what, what the first syllable sounds like? Tough. Tie, right? Okay, so hear that word, tie. Where is that Y located in that first syllable? Is it located at the beginning or the end? Middle. Tie, the beginning or the end? Here's, that's the syllable, tie. And it's located at the end of that syllable, okay? 
Now, I'm gonna come back to that word in just a minute. The next word that I'm going to spell is something that I always see in the science fiction books that I read. And this word is cyborg. How many syllables does cyborg have? Billy? Two. It has two syllables. What does the first syllable sound like? Sci. Sci. And is that Y at the beginning of the syllable or at end of the syllable? End. It's at the end. Okay. So think about it. Typhoon, cyborg. Do you hear some do you hear a sound in there? What does that Y sound like? What does that Y sound like, Jamar? It's, it makes a I sound. It makes a long I sound. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking that if it's at the end of a syllable, it's going to make that long I sound. And so this syllable, is, is this Y a consonant or is it a vowel now? Vowel? It's a vowel because what? You it's said it's at the end. It's at the end of a what? Word. Syllable. Mm -hmm. And it makes that long I sound and it sounds like a vowel, doesn't it? Yes, okay. Let's try another word. Now here's a word that you're going to see in the book that you will we'll read today. How many syllables does surgery have? Two. Katina? Two. It has three syllables. All right. Let's look at that last syllable sound. What, what does that last syllable sound make? A long E. It makes a long E sound. So like surgery. So we hear re and at the end we hear a long E sound. So Again, where is this Y located? At the end of a what? Syllable. Syllable. And notice that it's also located at the end of a word as well. So here's another situation in which Y becomes a vowel when it's at the end of a word. Does that make sense? Okay. And let's try one more word. Can any one of you figure, tell me about the Y here? Jamar? The Y is at the end of the syllable, so it's going to be a vowel. Right. Many. Very good. And it's also at the end of a word, so it also makes that vowel sound. Does that make sense? All right. Now, here are a few exceptions. There are always exceptions to every rule. Now, how many syllables does say have? One. Ricky? One. It has one, it has one syllable, so that means it's a monosyllable word. Now, the Y is at the end of the word, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. But does it make that long I or that long E sound? No. No, what sound do you hear here? He the own sound. It's own sound. You hear the word. You hear? Yeah. Okay, you hear say. You hear A at the end, right? But that Y is not making that long A sound. What's causing that long A sound? Katina? The A and the Y. The A and the Y, very good. That's called a vow vowel digraph, okay? And so there will be some exceptions. Again, you have say and you have day, okay? And then you have a few other words that, that are monosyllable that goes along with that. So here's our word work. That's our word work. Now let's get into our book that we're going to read today, The First Woman Doctor, all right? I want to front load you with some vocabulary terms that I think you may be unfamiliar with, and we'll talk about those. If you look at pay on page, and then on that same page, in one of the text features, the photograph here, you'll see the word suffrage. Do you see that on the picture, the, the word suffrage on a sign in the picture? Yes. Okay. Suffrage means the right to vote. Back in the early... 20th century, women were not allowed to vote. And so here, th this is a picture from that time, and, and they, they did marches to try to get the right to vote, okay? And then look in, the text, look in this caption next to the photograph. It says, women fought for many years until an amendment was passed to give them the right to vote. An amendment is like a change made to a law. So the law at that time was that women were not allowed to vote. And women didn't have a lot of rights during that time as well, but here, this was one of, the, one of the things they were denied. 
And so then an amendment was passed to give them that right to vote, okay? And then finally, there's a word on page 10, vocabulary words that you will come across. And if you forget, I wrote out the definitions for you. I want us to just flip through the, this book and take a look at all of the text features that will help you understand the text. What do you see there? Captions. You see captions, headings. headings. Do you see anything, Katina? Highlights. You see high, I see highlights and you see highlights as well. Ricky? Labels. You see labels, okay. Photographs, all of those are text features to help us understand what's going on in the text. So as you read, I want you to go use those to help you understand what's going on in the text, okay? Um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to read, all right? Here's something that I like to tell you. There's an overall effect that goes on with this story. It says Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman doctor who changed the lives of many women through her work. As you read, I want you to think of some causes that helped her to change the, the lives of many women. So here's the effect. She changed the lives of women, many women through her work. And I want you to think of some of the causes. It's like cause and effect, okay? As you read, I want you to notate those details and I'm gonna give you some sticky notes to do that, okay? okay. Elizabeth Blackwell wanted to be a doctor. At the time, very few women went to college. <coughs> Expect me not. What is this? Let's let's look at this word here. What do you think you see? Do you see any familiar words in here? Especially okay. not. Okay, so you know that this word is pronounced as what? What did you What did you say this word is? Especially. Especially, and. How did you, uh, the first time you didn't, you didn't pronounce it the right way, but the second time you did, tell me what you did differently. I changed the sound into sh. This word right here? Especial. Oh, this word, especially, okay. So one way that I can decode this word is I look for familiar words. I know that this word says special. Did you recognize that word in there? Elizabeth, strength and... What is that word? Strength. Are you saying strength? Like with a C sound or strength? Strength. Okay, so that right there, that's going to be a blend. Do you see how I, I blended th that together so it doesn't make that C sound, okay? So just remember that when you see that ST, okay? Strength and courage. Break that word apart. Do you recognize any smaller words in there? Sue. Okay, so you have Sue here and then... Pursue. Mm -hmm. Pursue. Very good. And you can go ahead and start reading. And up and down child, childhood. Elizabeth Blackwell was born on February 3rd, 1821 in Bristol, England. Her parents believed in equal rights for man and woman. This was very unusual at the time. Elizabeth's parents made sure she, she had a good educate, education. Okay, let's stop there. So, this word right here, do you see anything familiar? One of the biggest things that I noticed while the children were reading was that they know basic word patterns, they know different rules as it applies to vowels, but when it's time to string various syllables together to make longer multisyllabic words, that's when they get stuck especially if they've never seen that word at all. And so one thing that I wanted them to do was to look at the word, try to pronounce it, 
and think in their minds, does this pronunciation make sense? Is how I'm pronouncing it understandable based on the content of the text? For example, the word education, he said education. So now we need to stop, look at the word, and think about if there are any smaller words that we recognize and taking those words and putting them together. Education. Education. Very good. Education for all. Elizabeth wanted to educate, educate other women so that they could become doctors too. A famous nurse named Florence. Wait, wait, look at her name again. Florence. Mm -hmm. Medical. Okay, let's look at that word. Now, even though this is the name of someone, it's still just as important to pronounce their name the right way, okay? Because different the, the rules of reading still apply to names. So let's look at that word. Do you see anything familiar? I see consonant, vowel, consonant. Okay, so you see the the syllable the syllabication of it, but do you see any words in there that you notice that are familiar? The I. Okay. What about what's the opposite of day? Night. Night. Do you see the word night in there anywhere? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. So if we stop right there we see Nightingale, Nightingale. Nightingale, very good. Now you can still apply your syllabication rules that we talked about before using that, but this is also another way that you could do it as well, okay? All right, keep going. Florence Nightingale shared the same way. Together they opened the Women's Medical College in New York City in 1816. You may continue reading. And Katina, are you finished? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you start from the page 10 for me? Elizabeth wanted to educate other women so that they could become doctors too. A famous nurse named shared the same dream. Together, they opened the Women's Medical College in New York City in 1968. Florence Nightingale helped nurse many injured soldiers in... So let's talk about some of the things that we read throughout the, the book. I noticed that you all have notes written down and it sounds like you you have some details for the causes of how Elizabeth Blackwell changed the lives of many women through her work and we'll talk about that. One question that I want to ask you is what made Elizabeth become determined about being a doctor? What made her de determined about becoming a doctor? I love how Jamar is going back to his text to find details that help that will help him answer this question. Billy? She worked hard and then people began to respect her. How has her experiences, how has Elizabeth's experiences helped shape her to become a doctor? Think about some of the things she had to go through. She was intelligent and informed. And who made her intelligent and informed? So there is a lot that we could talk about with this book, um, but I don't want our time to end too quickly. I want to point out something. Now remember I said that this was a book and it had a lot of words in there that were unfamiliar to you. These are called multisyllabic words. Okay, multisyllabic words. There are lots of rules with phonics and words that sometimes we just can't remember. And one of the easiest ways to remember something is to try to really chunk sounds that you are already familiar with, okay? I saw this a lot right here. I saw this word right here. Now, even though this is, this is actually a person's name, but I think this is a great example of how we could 
break this apart, decode this word, based on what we already know and some of the sounds that we already know. What's the familiar, what's the familiar word that you see? What, what do you see, Jamar? I see night. You see the word night, okay. So you know it says night. There can't be any other pronunciation that goes along with that, right? What's the next word that you see? In. Do you see, you see what? In. You see the word in, okay. So you have night, okay. Night, in, and do you see anything else? Katina? Gale. Gale, very good. Very good. And notice that right here, this is what kind of E? A long E. Nope, not a long short? E. Not even a short. I actually don't hear that. Do you hear an E sound in there? Well, we know it's a vowel, but do you see it? You, do you hear an E in there? You don't hear an E. It almost as if it stops at this word right here, right? So we know that this says Gale. How do we know if this word right here is short or long? Because if, you, if the E were there, it would have made gal. It would have made, right, exactly. It would have made that short A sound. But because that E is there, it makes like a long A sound. Okay? All right. So that's just an example of how we are able to decode a longer multisyllabic word just by chunking, okay? And then don't forget to apply some of those syllabication patterns that we talked about as well. And remember, those syllabication patterns don't always fit every word. So you have to really think about it, and you have to think about if it makes sense. Sort of like that word education, and if it sounds right, okay? One of the things that I noticed is that they understand basic word patterns and word sounds. They, they know vowel rules, uh, the rules of different vowel sounds for the most part, but when it's time to string together those longer syllables and, and to create longer multisyllabic words, that's where they get stuck. And so one thing that I wanted them to do was to look at stop, look at the word, see if it made sense to them. And if it didn't, comprehension wise, or even if they knew they were mispronouncing the word, look at the word, see if it has some of those familiar basic words within that word and string them together. The first thing that I did was to write notes for myself because it gave me a picture of where they're currently performing and what I need to do next for any type of center work or word work that may be involved or what my next guided reading lesson would look like. The miscues give us a picture of the student's deficiencies and it helps tell where our instruction needs to go next. It gives us a snapshot of what the students are capable of decoding and how we could help them to start decoding words that they are missing.